Hi everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about painting your background. I'm going to show you absolutely how easy it is to do using some tools in Photoshop. Let's jump in with this fun little image. So I was shooting this, um, these are I think a salvia plant and these little bitty moth butterflies were hanging out and the light was beautiful. They were kind of glowing, but there's so many distractions. It was really hard to just isolate. Now I could crop this, but I really don't want to do that. I want to see how I can remove the distracting background and actually paint it for a creative look. So we're going to jump right over to Photoshop. Now, I have worked over the years to figure out some really simple ways to get the look that I want, and I'm going to show you um, and tell you about those today. So first, we want to duplicate our background. Now, that's just something I like to do so that I always have a background copy in case I need it. The second step is I want to select my subject. Now, this is easier than ever in Photoshop. So if you don't have this menu, you can also go up to Select and Subject. This is a new tool that Photoshop just updated. And so we can select subject. And it does a really pretty good job of selecting. Now, I'm not going to be super picky about this because I am really just working on the background. Now, I do want to make sure my entire bug. So I'm going to go up to the um, quick selection tool, grab the plus brush, I want to make sure all of my little bug is selected and I really don't need that part. I'm just kind of going around to see if there's anything that got a little a little messed up. Looks like it did. Um, everything else is great. I'm missing maybe some of this antenna. Let me see if it will pick it up. Nope, it's not going to. So I'm just going to not worry about that because we can mask that off later. Okay, so now that I have my selection, I'm going to go to Select and Inverse. Now again, remember, I you do not need to have the selection exactly perfect. It's not like we're cutting the image out and pasting it. We are actually going to paint and work with our background. So now that we've inverted, so remember we went to Select Inverse, now our subject is protected. We have these lines going around our image so we know that we can work with our background. So the first thing I'm going to do for this image is a quick background adjustment. I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and I want to apply a Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to blur it pretty heavy. So we could take it all the way up, but I think I'll bring it down, well actually, Probably like it all the way all the way up now you can see our little bug antennas are off but we're gonna we're gonna fix that don't worry let's start with it yeah for this example I want to bring it bring it pretty far up I'm gonna click OK now the next thing I want to do is I'm gonna grab the clone tool and with the clone tool I'm going to come over and I'm going to get my brush pretty large because for this image, I've got these pockets of green and pockets of purple. And what we want to do is we want to blend all of that. So I'm going to use the target to select and then I'm going to bring it over. Now my opacity right now is at 90%. Let's bring that down to 50%. And I am just going to start popping some of this with the clone tool. Let's bring our opacity up a little bit more. Just going to grab that clone and I am just popping in some of the green. I'm just kind of breaking this up. And let's grab some green down here and come around with it. So that is one tool and we could continue to use the clone tool and kind of work around. The next thing that I like to do is actually grab the eyedropper. And I'm going to select this green color and then I'm going to go to my brush. Opacity about 25%. Now I do want to use a large brush because we have a large area to cover. What I'm going to do is start popping in some of the green over top of this purple. And again, make your brush larger. I'm just going to keep going around. And we can get close to our subject because we've got it protected. 
so I can come in here and over this purple I'm just blending now I want to get rid of this blob so I'm just going to go over it a little bit and now what I want to do is grab some of this purple so let's go to our eyedropper grab some of that um, let's get a little bit of that purple maybe select right here come back with our brush and I'm just going to pop in some purple now for that I'm going to erase the opacity yeah, let's get some of that purple popped in here. So I'm just kind of making my own texture. Now I could have added a texture, but I really like to do this with the colors that are in the image. And so I'm just going to come around and I'm just trying to get that kind of painted, bokeh, dreamy look. I'm going to make the brush even bigger and just pop in some of that. Now I, I'm going to undo that one. I like that lime green, so I'm going to grab my dropper again and not the heel tool. I want my dropper and I'm going to select that green again and just grab the brush and pop some of that in. So again, just continuing to work with it. All right, once you get pretty good place, not, not too bad, what I want to do now is I'm going to go over to my brushes. Now let me minimize this group for you so that you can see the brushes. Now under brushes, I have some brushes from Adobe. They are the Kyle's brushes. I'll include a link in the description of the video. And there are several in here that I really love. Under the impressionistic set, there are many that I love to use. Today, I think we will use the, um, let's use the Monet. That's probably a pretty good one. There's also a French one, but let's start today with the Monet. I'm going to enlarge the brush and I've still got it on that lime green color. So I think what I'll do is let's duplicate this background layer. And that way we can call this one our brush. And I want to just use the brush tool on this layer. Now for opacity, I need to take that down or it's going to be way too much. So let's go to about 20% and I'm just going to start popping this brush texture around. Now I like to just pop it around. You can, you know, brush it, but I, I like to just kind of pop it around. So we're adding some texture all around our flower for our background. Now we're doing this with that kind of green color, but it's also picking up the purple. So the brushes will kind of alternate the colors as you go around. So you can see if we look in close, it's just adding a little bit of texture and detail. Just giving us that painted kind of dreamy look. Now there are some others. Um, that's the impressionistic. If I go to watercolor, there are some watercolors that I also really like. Um, this one adds a paper texture. I think if we hover over it, let's make it larger. You can see that's at 20%. Um, that's a little bit, or excuse me, 90%. So that is stronger than I like, but I do like the brush. So if you're ever not sure which brush to use, just put it at 100%. So I really like how this is giving us some additional texture and we can just pop that in and around. And so that is the beauty of these brushes. The brushes are free through Adobe and there are hundreds of them. And so it is so fun to take the colors in your image and just add, you know, a little bit of impressionism and a little look. And as you can see, it only takes a few minutes. Now, if you feel like that is too strong, you can just remove the opacity, lower the opacity down. You can also change your blend mode. So we could do soft light, which is really going to give a pop to the image. We could darken. You could do um, screen, which is going to give you that kind of bright ethereal look. Um, we don't want to do color burn. Multiply is going to darken. But you can you can see you could try some different lights if you wanted that effect. I think screen is really pretty, and then we could lower the opacity, you know, down. 
So it's taking away a little bit of the brush detail. So I'm going to go ahead and take it back to normal. Let's take that opacity back up. I really want to see that texture in this image. All right, so that is how I would take this image and paint the background. So let's turn these off and I'll show you this is the before. This is after we used our blur and our paintbrush. And this is using the creative paintbrushes to add a little bit of texture and detail to your image. So I hope you'll have fun trying this technique. Again, the link to Adobe's free brushes will be in the description of this video. Thanks so much, everybody. Stay well.